Good evening and thanks for watching Tonight at 6. I'm Guy Atchley. And I'm Stella Inger. Breaking news on the west side. Tucson police have found the body of a man with obvious fatal injuries. Ricky Mitchell is standing by at the scene. She joins us live with the latest. Guys, Stella Tucson police still on the scene here. They're actually staged in this parking lot of a call center that is just north of Miracle Mile. Now, what they can tell us about what happened, about 2.45 today, they responded here because a suspicious person was throwing rocks and maybe trying to break into a business here along Miracle Mile. They arrived and found a man matching that description, and he was acting aggressive towards officers, so they detained him. Now, at that same time, they received info on a possible injured person, so more officers arrived, performed a search of this desert area behind the call center, and that's when they found the adult man dead with obvious signs of trauma. Now, they're not going into many details about what obvious signs of trauma mean. They can say that he was not shot, but they're not saying exactly how he died at this point. Again, officers are still on scene here. It's the very early stages of the investigation. They're still actually searching that desert area, looking for more evidence as well. We'll bring you the latest on this as soon as we can. Reporting live from Miracle Mile, I'm Ricky Mitchell. Okay. On nine on your side. All right, Ricky, thank you very much. Well, tonight, police are looking for a man who stole several purses from TJ Maxx on Oracle. Tucson police say this is video of him walking into the store. They say he took his time, picked out the ones he wanted, and walked out without paying. TJ Maxx says the purses could be worth up to $2,000. If you recognize him, please call 911 or 88 Crime. Another midnight deadline, another standoff in Congress. Funding for the Department of Homeland Security is set to run out tonight. House Republicans put forward a short-term fix, a three-week spending bill to keep DHS up and running. But it did not solve the deep divisions over immigration, so it failed to pass. The agents are still going to go out there and do their job. We went through this a couple of years ago. Uh, it is a, a big kick to the morale. But uh, the agents are trained, they'll still do their job. But what we do ask is, because we are doing our job and because we are upholding our oath to uh, protect this country, we're asking for a little bit of backup. Congress has about four hours to get a deal done. If they don't, thousands of Homeland Security workers, such as Border Patrol and TSA agents, would have to work without pay until a resolution is found. TUSD is in the midst of a playground overhaul after Night on Your Side uncovered dangerous conditions at many closed schools. This after a boy fell and was hurt so badly he needed emergency brain surgery, prompting a $23 million lawsuit against the district. We have been showing you TUSD's effort to fix the problem all week long, and today it was the turn of Van Horn Elementary. A contracted crew spent the morning digging out the jungle gyms and pounding down concrete that was sticking out of the ground. Crews have now removed playground sets at six of the seven closed schools. Now, your first warning weather with Chief Meteorologist Aaron Christensen. Spent some time out at the rodeo today, and a lot of folks are concerned about the weather this weekend. They were all excited about the sunshine today. The wind has, however, begun to pick up. A live look on our sky cam. You can see those palm trees swaying quite a bit, and the wind is only going to strengthen tomorrow. Right now, 17 mile an hour winds sustained at Tucson's airport. That means blowing at that strength for at least two minutes straight. We're at 71 degrees. But if you're headed out tomorrow, wind is definitely going to be the big factor in the afternoon, gusting up to 34 miles miles per hour from the southwest, but a high of 72. So we have tweaked our chances for rain on Sunday. I'll have that forecast coming up. Aaron, thank you. A local favorite in Green Valley, Old Time Butcher Shop is closing soon. Frank and Charlene Bantlin have been running it for more than 14 years now. And as Keaton Thomas tells us, community members are already feeling the loss. At Old Time Butcher Shop in Green Valley, owner Frank Bantlin is in the back fixing up an order for a customer. Uh, this is going to be a 10-pound standing rib roast. We interviewed him while he's working because they've been so busy since announcing their closing March 21st. Basically, we've got more business now than uh, we normally do. And he's got a fridge full of lists from customers wanting to stock up for later. This one guy wants 20 pounds of something. The sign here at the butcher shop says we are closing. They put that up a couple weeks ago. Now some customers saying they don't even know where they're going to get their meat now. Well, what are you going to do when this place closes? Go kill jackrabbits, I guess. I mean, we're at this point, we're willing to drive a distance to get the quality that these guys have provided for us. Which is why some customers say they come here. The quality is, is, is a lot fresher. 
But the shop here is closing for a few reasons. Charlene Bantlin, also an owner, says one is they're raising their great-grandchildren after adopting them while they were little. Matthew was here when he was, by the time he was seven weeks old, every day in a meat box for his nap. But now that they're older, it's harder to dedicate time to them. The other reason, though, is common in southern Arizona. Most customers are gone for half the year. Now Frank Bantlin hopes someone may come along and take over the business for him. Right now, he's going to be looking for another job, hopefully with less hours. Keaton Thomas, Kega 9 on your side. Kaiten, thank you. Well, you'll probably see them high in the sky over Tucson this weekend. Planes that are ghosts of the past flying with some of the newest fighters in the air. And tonight, we give you a closer look. Here's Craig Smith reporting from Davis Monthan. Over here, the modern Air Force, supersonic and packed with technology. Over here is the World War II heritage they came from. And at Davis Monthan, the two will practice flying together. They are planes from history so distant, you may have seen them only in a world of black and white. But these planes are living history, ready to show how far the Air Force has come. The Heritage Conference trains pilots in the tricky job of flying planes that were fast for the 1940s with modern jets like F-22s and F-16s, more at home flying two, three, or four times faster. Charlie Hainline loves looking out the canopy of a fighter from the past and seeing the future next to his wing. It shows the stark, you know, difference in, in how far we've come. And, you know, we're here, to, you know, to, to honor the then and, and the now, you know, both. And it's just a, the, the perfect representation of, of our past and, and our present and future even. The chunky P-47 Thunderbolt shot down plenty of planes but gained a reputation as a tough ground attack aircraft. No other fighter looks like the P-38 Lightning twin engines and twin tails gave it lightning speed and long range. But what was high tech in the 1940s may be a real handful 70 years later. Well, you know, as a pilot, you got to be, uh, be uh, cognizant of that uh, things going wrong and, uh, you know, some of these old airplanes, that they'll happen. The planes are scheduled to fly Saturday and Sunday, but unless you have base credentials, you cannot actually get on the base. You can get pretty good viewing from the fence line, and the Air Force recommends setting up to watch down on Valencia. Craig Smith, KGUN 9, on your side. Craig, thank you. All right, I have a question for everyone watching. White and gold or black and blue? Was, what color is his dress? Because it has a lot of people talking. <laughs>